integral of u dv is u v minus the integral of v du. You're close. You said times, I think. Okay, so what I wanted to look at today is I wanted to look at having to do integration by parts over and over and over again. We did an example yesterday where we had to do it twice. What if you had to do it five times? As long as your coefficients are going down, you're okay. As long as your power uh, is going down, you're going to be okay. Or there are other problems which move <laughs> around on themselves. And you'll see what I mean by that here in a few minutes. So what I wanted to do is start by one where we have to do it twice and recognize that there's a pattern. So let's take one that's fairly easy. So we're not going to have a bunch of constants to deal with. U equal our integral of x squared e to the x dx. So we had a little rule which told us how to pick our u. So in this case, u should be x squared, x squared because i late, e came last. That was exponentials. So u equals x squared. And that makes dv equal to e to the x dx. We integrate over here. du is 2x dx. And or we differentiate there. du is 2x dx. We integrate here. V is e to the x. Okay, so we're going to have u times v. That's x squared e to the x. Minus integral of v, which is e to the x, times du. 2x dx. And we notice that we have improvement. We're not done by any means, but it certainly got better. We started with an x squared e to the x. We now have an x e to the x. Our power got smaller. So we're going the right way. If this started as an x, cube, uh, x squared, and then the next step I had an x cubed, I would say we're going the wrong way. Our powers are getting bigger. That's a bad thing. But we still have multiplication. We have e to the x times 2x. So we still have to use integration by parts again. So we do it again. u is Two x. 2x. And dv is e to the x dx again, isn't it? Differentiate. du is 2dx. Integrate v is e to the x. So what I want you to start noticing is look what happened. We started with u being x squared. We took its derivative, we got 2x. And then we had to take its derivative again, didn't we? And we got down to the 2. So this u isn't, in a sense, it isn't changing. We started with the x squared. There's first derivative, there's second derivative. So we're differentiating the same thing over and over again. And over here with integrals, dv started as e to the x. We integrated it once. And then we had to integrate it again. It turned out we got the same answer over and over and over again because I picked e to the x to make it easy. But that's what happened. All right, so we have x squared e to the x minus this whole thing has to be subtracted, so I'm going to put it in parentheses. u times v. What's u this time? 2x, and v is e to the x, minus the integral of v, which is e to the x, du is 2dx. All right, so we're done now because we can answer that final integral. Our answer is x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x. And then minus and a minus becomes a plus 2e to the x plus c. All right, so again, notice what happened. We started with u being x squared. In the very first one, there's the x squared. Then we took the derivative. u was 2x. There's the 2x. Then we took the derivative again. We got a 2. There's the 2. So these things here, this is our original u. This is our u prime. 
And that's our U double prime. And then what happened with the e to the x's? This was our original dv. We integrated that. And that ended up right there, didn't it? And then we had to integrate it again, and it's right there. My point is, once you pick your u, you can quite quickly take the derivatives and find the u for the next one, the u for the one after that, so on and so forth, by just continuing to take derivatives. And how do you keep finding your v's? You just keep integrating over and over again. The last thing to notice is the signs. Notice the first one started as a plus. The next one is a minus. The one after that is a plus. If I would had to do it a third time, the next one would be a minus, so on and so forth. The signs alternate. Okay, so here's the way this works. If you have to do integration by parts five times, the reality is you don't write it all down. You use what we call the tabular method. In the tabular method, we build ourselves a little table. U and DV. What do you pick to be U? X to the fifth. And what do you pick to be dv? E to the x dx. On the table, you go down this side on the left-hand side and you take derivatives. What's the derivative of x to the fifth? 5x to the fourth. The next derivative? 20x cubed. What after that? 120x. 120. You stop when you get to zero. What do you do on the right-hand side? You integrate over and over and over again. And the good news is the integral of e to the x is e to the x. Oh, I like e to the x. It's my favorite one. Okay? Then here's your answer. You need, for your very first one, you need u times v. Here's u. What's v? But it's really this e to the x, isn't it? Because this first one, this first one was really dv. So you multiply this way. You're going to go like so. There's your first term. Your first term is x to the fifth e to the x. The second term gets a minus sign. So then it's minus. And the next one, 5x to the fourth e to the x. And you simply keep going down that. When do you stop? When you get to zero, because zero times anything is going to be zero. The next one is a plus. 20x cubed e to the x. Then you have the next one as a minus. 60x squared e to the x plus a 120x e to the x minus 120e to the x plus c. I'm down to the bottom now. I used up all my terms. So what if, what if your dv wasn't constant? Excellent question. We'll do another problem. What if dv isn't just e to the x, e to the x, e to the x? That was too easy, wasn't it? All right. I mean, you're OK with too easy, but you know it's not always going to be that easy. Let's say we had the integral of x to the, what power do you want? Fourth. Fourth, all right. I was hoping somebody wouldn't say 26 or something. I didn't want to write that down. Four is good. And then how about we use sine of 3x. When I see that problem, what I notice is I'm going to need to use integration by parts four times. And I'm not going to write it out and do integration by parts four times. I'm going to use this tabular method. So we write down our u and our dv. What's u this time? 
Nope. I late. T, T for trig comes near the end, doesn't it? A for algebraic comes before that. So U should be X to the fourth. Derivatives. 4X cubed, 12X squared, 24X, 24, 0. That's when I stop. Sine 3x. All right, so now I have to integrate sine of 3x. What's the integral of sine of 3x? That would be the derivative. Cosine 3x times 3 would be the derivative. I need the integral. Negative cosine over 3. Negative cosine 3x over 3. So I'm going to write it as negative 1 third cosine of 3x. Integrate again. What's the integral of cosine? This regular old sine. But we're already going to have this negative one third, and then we're going to have to divide by a neg another three, aren't we? So it's going to be negative one ninth sine three x. Integrate again. One twenty seventh cosine three x. Excellent. Because the integral of sine is going to be a negative cosine, so that's where the minuses deal with, and then you get to divide by another three. And you keep going. The next one is one over eighty-one sine three x. And the last one's going to be a negative one over two forty-three, three to the fifth. Two forty-three cosine three x. All right, then what I like to do, I like to draw my arrows, remembering that the first one, the original sign in front of it is a plus, but when I actually take my plus, and then I got my x to the fourth, and then I got a minus here, I'm really going to get a minus. The next one starts with a minus, but I've got a minus here and a minus there, so the next one's going to end up being positive. And we keep going down the line. That one's a plus. That one's a minus. That one's a plus. And now all you have to do is write it all down. So it looks like the answer is negative one, negative one third x to the fourth cosine three x. And the next one's going to have a minus and a minus, so that's going to be a plus four ninths. X cubed sine three X. The next one has a plus and a plus, so that's plus twelve over twenty seven X squared cosine three X. The next one is a minus twenty four over eighty one X sine three X. And the last one is a minus 24 over 243 cosine 3x plus c. Almost harder to type it into WebAssign than it is to do the rest of the problem. Yeah. I don't know how big a power they'll give you, though. I don't know if they'll give you one that. That's x to the fourth. I don't know. X to the fifteen. Yeah. Good time. The box takes the whole screen. Well, the the moral of the story is, in my opinion, integrating by parts four times isn't that hard. Once you recognize that the, the there is a nice pattern, derivatives on one side, integrals on the other side, match your signs, and you're on a works out pretty slick. Then it's just going to be really, really long. Not that I'm aware of. So yeah, if this started as x to the 15, you're going to come over here and you're going to have to take a whole bunch of derivatives and a whole bunch of integrals and you're going to be in trouble because 
every time you're going to divide by 3, you're going to end up with a 3 to the 15th on bottom, which is a really big number. It's, can you do it in theory? Sure you can. Did you? No, it wouldn't work. Like, use the, mul the multiplying property of exponents. It feels like x to the 15th. Can you do, like, No. If you if you look at the numbers here, this is four, yeah. four times three, four times three times two, four times three times two times one. So you end up with four factorial at the bottom. So if this were an x to the fifteen, your last one would have fifteen factorial, which is again a monstrous number. <laughs> that number alone is going to take the whole screen to write down. I do believe it does understand factorial notation, okay. yeah, Good. but uh, it's not going to give you a problem with 15 factorial, I promise you that. Well, in statistics, it might. Well, we're not taking statistics, so we don't care about it. All right, the last thing that can happen with integration by parts It's problems that seemingly never end. Let me show you what I mean by that. The integral of sine x e to the x dx. I notice I have multiplication. I notice that u substitution certainly isn't going to work. If I let u be that one, that doesn't help. If I let u be that one, that doesn't help. It's integration by parts. So when we do integration by parts, u should be sine x because t comes before e in I late. So dv is e to the x dx. Derivative over here. Derivative of sine is cosine <coughs> dx. Integral over here. Integral of e to the x is e to the x. Alright, so this becomes u times v, that's sine x e to the x, minus integral of v e to the x times du cosine x dx. Yeah, and notice what happened. We started with a sine x e to the x. Now we have a cosine x e to the x. Did it get worse? No, but did it get better either? No, it didn't didn't really seem to go anywhere. So what do we do? Again. <laughs> do it again. U equals cosine x, which means dv is e to the x dx. U is the derivative of cosine, negative sine x dx, and v is e to the x. Okay, so I'm going to write this whole thing down and make it more clear what I'm going to do here in just a minute. I started with the integral of sine x e to the x dx. And I have sine x e to the x minus, and then I'm doing integration by parts again, so I need u times v. That's cosine x e to the x minus integral of v, which is e to the x, du, which is negative sine x dx. So just simplifying a tiny, tiny little bit, I'm going to write this as sine x e to the x minus cosine x e to the x, and then I have a minus here a minus here and a minus there. Three minuses make that a minus. Integral e to the x sine x dx. What happened? You're back to where you started. I'm back to where I started. So what do I do? <laughs> Come talk to the teacher. And what the teacher is going to tell you, you're going to take this big equation that you have, 
I'm going to put this in here on this side too, make it even more clear. And I'm going to take, and I'm going to add the integral of e to the x sine x dx on both sides. So the entire thing is zero? No. This piece is zero, isn't it? Those two reduce out. But what do I get on the left-hand side? Oh. One integral plus one integral is two integrals. So I now have two times the integral of sine x e to the x equals sine x e to the x minus cosine x e to the x. How do I get the integral all by itself? Oops, I forgot my dx. I simply divide by 2. And that happens sometimes. Sometimes you get problems that cycle around on themselves like that. Final answer is the integral of sine x e to the x dx equals 1 half times sine x e to the x minus cosine x e to the x plus c. Questions on that one? Could you also get a problem where it just didn't have an answer? Like, it never, like if it was like sine of 2x or something, because then you would have the 2 that you would bring out every time. So you wouldn't get back to what you started at. Excellent question. Let's try it. So what he's saying is, uh, you know, you made this way too simple. You just use sine x and e to the x. It's got to be harder than this. Well, this is pretty hard to begin with. But you're right, it does get harder. So he's saying, what if you started with a sine 2x? You might not get back to where you started. Do you want just e to the x or do you want a number there too? Just e to the x. Oh, you're not going to go crazy on me? No. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> Let's not throw out all of our chances. All right. U is sine of 2x. dv is e to the x dx. Derivative of sine of 2x. 2 cosine 2x. And integration over there is very easy. V is e to the x. We're going to have u times v sine of 2x e to the x minus integral of v e to the x du 2 cosine 2x dx. Once again, what I notice is I really didn't improve anything. I started with a sine 2x and an e to the x. I now have a cosine 2x and an e to the x. I didn't improve anything, but at the same time, I didn't make it any worse, which tells me integrate by parts again. Second time through, u is 2 cosine 2x. And the derivative of that is? negative 4 sine 2x dx dv equals e to the x dx v is still e to the x alright so again I like to write it all on one line it helps me to see it so I'm gonna have the integral of sine of 2x e to the x dx is I have a sine 2x e to the x minus Here's my integration by parts again. U times V. U is 2 cosine 2x. V is e to the x. Minus integral of V, that's e to the x. DU is negative 4 sine 2x dx. Alright, again, a little bit of rewriting. Sine of 2x e to the x minus 2 cosine 2x e to the x. And then I've got a minus, a minus, 
and a minus, so that's still going to be a minus. And I'm going to take this 4 and I'm going to bring it out front. Integral e to the x sine 2x dx. So what's happened? It cycled back around, didn't it? I started with an e to the x sine 2x. I have an e to the x sine 2x. So I'm going to take this integral right here, and I'm going to add it to both sides. So the only difference is, instead of just having the nice number 1 like I had before, now I have a, a 4. So I'm going to add 4 integral e to the x sine 2x dx to both sides. So, one integral plus four integrals is? Five. five integrals. So, five times the integral of sine 2x e to the x dx equals sine 2x e to the x minus 2 cosine 2x e to the x. To get my final answer, Divide by 5 and then put a plus C on the end. Questions on that? What would have happened if you'd have been cruel to me and said, I just don't want an E to the X, I want an E to the 3X right there? Terrible things. Terrible things. What kind of terrible things? Lots of fractions, because when you integrate, if you had a 3 there, you'd end up with a 1 third. So you'd have this 1 third messing around with this 2, you'd have some fractions. And then when I had to integrate again, I would end up with a 1 ninth. So I would have a 1 ninth floating around with some, you'd end up with all sorts of little fractions that you'd have to deal with. But it would still work. You would eventually cycle back to the same thing, but you would end up with a 4 ninths out front of here. So you'd have to add four ninths of the integral to both sides and then divide by the appropriate fraction. It would still work, it's just uglier. Is there any time that it wouldn't work for multiplication problems? Absolutely. That one. Looks like an integration by parts problem but it won't work. And why not? Well, here's the problem. Yeah, maybe it'll work. I don't know. I think I'm changing my mind. There we go. Make it e to the x tangent x. Now it won't work. U should be? Tan x. Tan x. dv is? e to the x dx. And here's where the problem is going to start. What's the derivative of tangent? Secant squared x. Secant squared x dx. And v is e to the x. So you have u times v, tangent x e to the x, minus integral of v du. In a sense, I, I would be worried at this point because I started with a tangent and since it got worse, now I have a secant squared. My power has gone up. So I would be worried right now that this is not a good thing. And it's certainly not because in the next step, u is going to be secant squared. And what's the derivative of secant squared? That's the derivative of secant. What's the derivative of secant squared? You got to bring the 2 down. Leave the secant alone. So if u is secant squared x, du, you got to use the chain rule. You bring the 2 down. You leave the secant alone. You subtract 1 from your power. Then you got to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And you can see what's happening. It's getting messier and messier at every step. So just because you have multiplication doesn't mean integration by parts is going to work. Sometimes it crashes on you. Questions on that? Can u be tan x 
and then your DB can be a different value and it will work. Let's try. So his question is, could u be e to the x? Which is real nice because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And then v, dv, would have to be tangent x dx. And you have to integrate. What's the integral of tangent? Natural log. Absolute value of secant. If secant plus tangent is the integral of secant. So once again, I, I'm looking at that right away, and I'm thinking, oh my god, things are getting worse. Now I've thrown a log into the mix. <laughs> that can't be a good thing. So no, I, I don't think that one's one that you can integrate by parts. <coughs> Simply doesn't work. Does it ever work when tangent is involved? I think it would have worked for the first problem that I had where I had x tangent x because the derivative of x would have just been 1 and that piece would have gone away. Although we still would have had an ugly thing because we would have integrated once and we'd have had natural log of secant for our v. And so we would have had to integrate that again. It still would have been nasty, but it might have worked. Other questions? <coughs> 